Hello and welcome to Let's Play Starship Traveller by Steve Jackson. Okay, there's the front cover. Okay, let's read the synopsis. Uh, the fate of the Starship Traveller and her crew lies in your hands. Sucked through the nightmare of the Celsian Void, uh, the Starship Traveller emerges at the other side of the black hole into an unknown universe. You are the captain of the Traveller and her fate depends on you. Will you be able to discover the way back to Earth from the alien peoples and planets you encounter? Um, or will the Starship be doomed uh, to roam uncharted space forever? Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need for this adventure. You decide which planets to visit, which dangers to risk, and which aliens to fight. Um, cover illustration by Peter Andrew Jones. Copyright Solar Wind Limited. And there's a picture of Steve Jackson. Okay, this is the fourth book in the uh, in the Fighting Fantasy series, and it's the first one that isn't based on swords and sorcery and magic and things. So um, it's the first futuristic one. Okay. Starship Traveller. Sucked through the appalling nightmare of the Celsian Void, uh, the Starship Traveller emerges at the other side of the black hole into an unknown universe. You are the captain of the Traveller and her fate lies in your hands. Um, will you be able to discover the way back to Earth from the alien peoples and planets you encounter? Or will you and your crew be doomed to roam uncharted space forever? Steve Jackson, co-founder of the highly successful Games Workshop, has created a thrilling adventure among the stars. There are three new forms of combat to be used, a full ship's crew and an, and an adventure sheet to record your gains and losses. All you need is two dice, a pencil and an eraser. I think they mean all you need are two dice. Yeah, all you need are two dice, a pencil and an eraser. Um, many dangers lie ahead and your success is by no means certain. It's up to you to decide which route to follow, which which dangers to risk and which uh, and which adversaries to fight. Okay. Okay, so there's all the books up to 50 and uh, Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Extremely difficult books they are, um, I don't mind telling you. Yeah. So this is the fourth one, Starship Traveller. Uh, we've done the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, we've done the Citadel of Chaos, and we've done the Forest of Doom. Um, we're now on to Starship Traveller. Um, I've done some others as well, but um, um, I've done all the ones that I did as a child. Um, I've started to do the ones that I haven't done before, I've never read before, uh, such as this one. Anyway, so there's the, uh, rather there's the um, picture of uh I can't remember what to call that page a picture of the uh, of the inner title page or something like that I don't know anyway there's a picture um illustrated by Peter Andrew Jones and by Puffin Books okay there's a list of um um dedications may they all live long and prosper yeah so obviously this is inspired by star trek uh, which makes sense, really, because um, those sort of people who are in, who are into Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of thing, like uh, those sort of real RPGs, like Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone. I mean, I mean it makes sense they'd be into Star Trek as well, really. Anyway, um, let's go down to the first page to read. Here we go. Uh, prepare for your mission. You are captain of the Starship Traveller. Uh, the ship itself is the pride of your Astro Navy. Its weapons and defence systems are the most technically advanced in the fleet, and its crew are first rate. Um, before you begin your voyage, you must determine the strengths and weaknesses of yourself as captain and your crew members. The journey through the black hole um, will do some damage to the weapons and defence systems on the ship. Uh, to determine your starting characteristics, you will need two dice and a pencil uh, to record scores on the adventure sheet on page 16. Uh, before writing on the adventure sheet, you may wish to take photocopies for use in future 
in future adventures. It is unlikely that you will find the way back to Earth in your first adventure. Um, I have written down the perfect route, so I am going to do it first time. So, no, 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 no. Anyway, um, unlike previous fantasy game books, you will not find rules for fighting alien creatures and ships here at the beginning of the book. Rules for ship to ship, hand to hand, and phaser laser pistol combat are given in the text of the book to allow you to start playing with minimal delay. As you come across combat situations you will be referred to sections describing the appropriate combat rules. All you need to do here is roll dice to determine the initial scores on your adventure sheet. Uh, your ship. Roll one die. Add six to the roll. Enter this total in the weapons strength section of your adventure sheet. When shooting at enemy ships, you will need to roll lower than this score to make a hit. Okay, so roll one die, add six to the roll. So we need it as high as possible. Here we go, my old dice program. There we go, a little bit dodgy there. Thank you. Okay, yep, six. Uh, that'll do, perfect. Um, first time. Okay, so we rolled a six. Let's put that in the adventure sheet. So weapon strength is 6 plus 6, which is 12. Fantastic. Good. Okay, roll one die. Add 12 to this roll. Enter this total in the shield section of your adventure sheet. When enemy ships hit you, you will lose points from uh, this shield score. Your shields will weaken significantly after a few hits have been taken. If your ship is ever hit when your shield score is 0, your ship will be destroyed instantly. Okay, so roll one die and add 12 to the score. So we need it as high as possible. Nope, 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 yes. Okay, so 6 plus 12 is 18. So let's put that down on the shield score. I'd have, um, I would have accepted 4 or above. Right, um, right next page. You and your crew. Excuse me a moment, I'm just going to close the window. It's getting slightly chilly in here. Okay, you and your crew. Uh, personnel will perform according to their skill and stamina scores. Their skill score reflects their abilities within their own profession, i.e. your science officer's skill with computers, your medical officer's skill as a doctor, your security officer's combat ability, and your own leadership and decision-making skills as captain. On your adventure sheet, you will see entries for your key staff. Captain, science officer, medical officer, security officer, and engineering officer, together with two security guards. Um, repeat the following procedure for each in turn. Roll one die, add six to the result. Enter the total as that person's skill score. Roll two dice, add twelve to the result. Enter the total as that person's stamina score. You may now see how each crew member is likely to perform at his or her job. The higher the skill score, the better. Okay, so roll one die, then roll two die, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, whoops, I don't have the dice program inside the uh, the recording window. There we go. Um, right, what am I doing? Oh, you're rolling a die. Uh, right, who's first? Right, for uh, me first, I'm the captain. And don't call me captain. That's from uh, Unification Part... Uh, Unification Part 1, I think, Star Trek Next Generation, Season 5. And don't call me Captain. You're walking in a very android way. Anyway, um, not excited about the new Picard series. It's going to be awful. Everyone knows it's going to be awful. I'll give it a go. I'll watch an episode of it, and then I'll stop. I just, I, I'm just curious. But I know it's going to be awful, because they don't make anything good anymore. Anyway... Uh, anyway, rolling one die, let's go. Okay. So, no, not having that. Nope, yes. Okay, 6 plus 6 is 12. So, there we go. Uh, I mean 12, not 6. There we go. Right, my stamina, roll 2 die. Uh, is it roll 1 or, or 2? I can't remember. Yeah, 2 and add 12. Right, okay. Uh, let's just get through this. Actually, I'll just roll for each of the other ones in turn, then do the two dice one later, then I won't have to change it over and over again. Right. Nope. 
yes, so four, five, okay, four and five, that's ten and eleven respectively. Alright, next, uh, um, four more to do. Alright, here we go. Nope, 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 yes. Uh, twelve, twelve, nope, and eleven. Twelve, twelve, eleven. Uh, next, nope, nope, yes, all right, and 11 again. Okay, so that's the, uh, oh, I've got really good scores. How, how, how did I manage that? All right, now let's to the, uh, do the other uh, two dice rolls. All right, let's go. Nope, yes. All right, that's 23. Nope. Right, 23, 23. Oops, wrong one. Uh, twenty three, twenty four. Oops, twenty four. Uh, twenty one. Uh, I'll allow that. Um, 19. And uh, 20. Okay, right, that'll do. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going, get rid of the buzzing because it's irritating. Go away. Right, um, yes, move on. Combat. Only security staff are skilled in combat. They will be your obvious choice in hand-to-hand -hand or phaser fighting. Non-security staff may fight, but their skills lie in other areas. If, by chance or through necessity, you wish a non-security crew member to fight an alien, you must deduct three points from his or her skill score during the battle. This rule applies to your science officer, medical officer, and engineering officer only. It does, not, it does not apply to you as a ship's captain. Your own fighting skills are equal to your professional skills, as befits a true hero. Luck. Every true hero is at the mercy of the forces of chance. You will find a luck box on your adventure sheet. Roll one die, add six to the roll, and enter the total in this luck box. Ow, there's a pain in my hand. Um, okay. Uh, roll one die, add six. Nope. Nope. Yes. Okay, so luck is 12. Uh, that was lucky of me to get a 6, wasn't it? Um, okay, let's move on. Um, beaming down on the, onto planets. When you arrive at a planet, you will be given the option of beaming down onto the surface. Sometimes only you will beam down, but often you will be instructed to choose two or three crew members to accompany you. When given this choice, you may choose only crew members listed on your adventure sheet. There are some other restrictions limiting your choice. See the losing an officer section below. Your science officer is a problem solver. Your medical officer is a doctor. Your engineering officer has a knowledge of mechanics and geology and your security officer and guards are your fighters. Record your choices before you land on the planet, and remember that only those staff actually in the landing party will be able to act for you while on the surface. That reminds you of uh, Sega Power's really groovy tips book, uh, um, A Shadow of the Beast, for the Sega Mars system. It was uh, just, after you, uh, just before you finish the castle, it says, um, put the jetpack or mask on before you uh, enter the door, otherwise you'll be instantly killed. They were wrong. Um, um, if you put, don't put on the jetpack and mask, um, if you don't pick up the jetpack and mask, then you're instantly killed, I think. If you do pick it up, but don't put it on, then you lose six health points. And if you do put it on and everything, then you don't lose anything. So they were wrong. Uh, Sega Power. I have th three copies of that book. Uh, anyway. Okay. 
restoring stamina. On some planets you may become involved in fights and other situations which drain your stamina scores. There are two ways of restoring stamina. You may find a planet with superior medical technology able to restore stamina. Instructions will be given in the text. You may also restore two stamina points to each crew member listed on your adventure sheet every time you leave a planet. However, you may only gain the advantage of this medical treatment if you have your original <laughs> excuse me. If you have your original medical officer I'm just thinking of Star Trek again. Um if your medical officer dies, you may not restore stamina in this way. Um crew members' stamina scores may never exceed their initial value. Losing an officer or security guard. If during your adventure one of the officers or guards listed on your adventure sheet dies or is lost, you must cross him off your sh uh, off your adventure sheet and he may play no further part in the adventure. His position is taken over by his assistant. You must determine the skill and stamina scores of this newly promoted assistant and then record them on the adventure sheet. The assistant's skill score is equal to the skill score of the lost, uh, of the lost officer minus two points. As, the, as this assistant is not as skillful as the officer he replaces. The assistant's stamina score is determined in the normal way, i.e. roll two dice and add 12 to the result. This newly promoted replacement may not be beamed down onto planets or used in any missions where you are instructed to choose a crew member. Uh, okay. Being the last available candidate for his particular position, you cannot risk losing him. However, you may use him for routine duties, i.e. where no option is given in the, in the text. A replacement medical officer may restore stamina to injured crew members on leaving planets. Uh, see restoring stamina above, but at the reduced rate of one stamina point per planet. I just realised I read the entire restoring stamina thing, but it wasn't actually. It didn't. You know, when you read a paragraph, it doesn't actually. You don't take it in. That's what happened. It was, I was thinking about something else while reading it. Um, every time you. Okay, every time you leave a planet. Right. Okay. I'll refer back to that. Uh, oh, that's it. Anyway, there's the adventure sheet. Blah blah blah. Uh, but I have it written on a text file. Deduct three points from skill in combat. Ooh, excuse me, long day. Okay. Your adventure is about to begin. The scores you have recorded on your adventure sheet will give you an indication of the strengths and weaknesses of yourself. Um, yep, yeah, your is that a redundant reflexive? No, no, it is a redundant. Because it's saying the scores uh, give you an indication of the weaknesses of yourself, so that doesn't make that's redundant. It's the, the yourself isn't the you isn't the scores, so therefore that's a redundant reflexive. It should it should read the scores you have recorded on your adventure sheet will give you an indication of the strengths and weaknesses of you, your crew, and your ship. I hate hate redundant reflexives. I just I just can't stand it. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, weaknesses of you, your crew, and your ship. You need know nothing of how these scores will come into play. All will be explained as necessary as your adventure unfolds. Uh, in the adventure which follows, or that follows, yeah, I think that should be that follows because it's because it there isn't a comma. Yeah, if it were in the adventure. Which follows. It's just in the adventure that in the adventure that follows. So it's immediate. So I can't think of the right term. It's things like a subordinate clause or whatever. I don't know. But it should be, in my opinion, the adventure that follows. You are the captain of the traveller, lost in an unknown universe. Your own skill as a captain will determine whether you and your crew will ever see Earth again. You are about to be flung through a back through a black hole into unknown space. Your only chance of return will be to find another suitable black hole and guide the ship th through it back to your own universe. You are now ready to set off. Take your seat on the bridge and prepare yourself for the adventure ahead. That's a very alien looking world, isn't it? I like that. I really wish I were I were good at art and I could draw stuff like that. Cause it's, uh, looking at that picture, it's, even though it's only like only black and white and, and if you deconstructed all it is is just sort of smudges and lines it I look at that picture and I think to myself that really does look like an alien world it's just amazing how 
easily an artist can do that and and convey the image of a alien world. I, I have such respect for that skill, which I do not possess. Yeah, it's really good. Anyway, uh, now turn over. Anyway, here we go, there's a picture. Look at this, it's just so good, the artwork. I mean, it's just the blackness. They've sort of uh, conveyed space, like the infinite blackness of space, with sort of scribbles, but it works. It's it's very strange how the art style and it really works. Obviously, they couldn't draw the space black because they want the black hole to be black. So it's really impressive how they made it look like um, how they made it look like you know space, even though it is scribbling, and they've managed to distinguish the black hole from the rest of space with just black and white. It's really good. Anyway, um, here's paragraph one. Panic from your seat at the helm of the Starship Traveller. You study the VDU anxiously. I think that's a video display unit. Engineering section has reported an overdrive malfunction which has locked the warp engines at a 10% velocity gain. Uh, the old Star Trek techno babble. Completely meaningless, but it sort of makes sense. But when you think about it, it doesn't. Um, you are watching the velocity indicator advancing rapidly through the safe region towards overload. You hit the communicator button and call engineering for further news. It is not good. The malfunction cannot be traced and it will take another 13 minutes for a system check to provide a full analysis. You are heading towards the Seltzian Void, a known black hole. You may or may not avoid it, but your science officer has another plan. Has another plan, rather. If you swing the ship through its immense gravitational pull, its gravity may its gravity drag may help reduce your speed as you travel away from it. This is worth a try, but the navigational tuning will have to be precise. You swing the starship hard to starboard. And I, I always forget which one's which. Is starboard left or right, and is port left or right? I can never remember. You swing the starship hard to starboard as you enter the Celsian's gravitational field and fasten your eyes on the velocity indicator. Uh, to your great relief, the plan seems to be working. The gain comes down from 10% to 5% to 0 to minus 5%. Loud cheers come from the crew, but you are still watching the, v the velocity indicator. It is now showing minus 15%, then minus 25%, and still falling. The ship is uh, the ship is being sucked into the Celsian void. You hit the red alert button and instruct all ship's personnel to strap themselves down. Uh, the ship begins to whine and shake as it rapidly accelerates towards the black hole. There is nothing you can do to avert the, uh, the impending disaster. An almighty explosion rocks the ship and all the crew, including you... Let me say that again. An almighty explosion rocks the ship, and all the crew, including you, lose consciousness. Turn to 256. Okay, returning to 256. Let's go. Finally, we make a start to adventure. Just uh, to let you know, this is not going to take very long. The route of I have, the route I have written down, is really short. It's it's just really short so this sh this should only take two videos this one and the next one okay here's paragraph 256 there's that nice picture again of that alien world I like that you and the other members of the crew are regaining consciousness again you hit the communicator and call for systems damage reports <laughs> excuse me just yawning there uh, pardon me um, all systems appear to be intact until engineering reports that the warp drive engines are dead. You are floating in space, but your drive reactors should be operational in 20 to 30 minutes. Your navigation officer is bewildered. He cannot identify your whereabouts, and the computer reports you are in uncharted space. Your science officer has run an event analysis, and you appear to have gone through the black hole uh, through a dimension warp, and you are now in what seems to be a parallel universe. After some delay, you regain warp drive. Long-range scan indicates three solar systems ahead, of which two may have intelligent life. I'm trying to make sense of that. I think it, I think they mean two of which. Yeah, I think they've they structured that sentence wrong or that clause wrong uh, wrongly. It should be 
two it should be long range scan indicates these sort of systems ahead two of which may have intelligent life yeah that makes sense uh, will you press on towards the life bearing system ahead turn to 86 turn to port towards the other life bearing system turn to 273 or turn to starboard towards the barren system turn to 142 Okay, we're going to press on towards the life bearing system ahead and turn to 86. Let's go. You increase speed towards a dull blue planet and start to orbit it. Uh, short range scanners indicate that it is a life bearing planet. The most heavily populated area appears to be a city in the centre of a large island. You may beam down into the centre of this city, uh, taking any other three crew members from the adventure sheet with you, turn to 209. Or you may leave orbit and continue onwards, turn to 321. We're going to leave orbit and continue onwards, 321. Yeah, um, in this video we're going to be leaving orbit and continuing onwards a lot, because most things are pretty pointless and that's why the solution is quite short. Okay, 321. Long range scanners indicate another planet ahead, orbiting the same sun but some distance further out. You may continue to investigate this planet, turn to 258, or you may plot a course to avoid it, turn to 44. We're going to plot a course to avoid it and turn to 44. Here we go. Approaching the purple star, your scanners indicate that the second planet has an atmosphere ideal for life. You drop into orbit around this planet and scan the surface. There are strong indications of intelligent activity. Indeed, it is likely that the planet's civilization is further advanced than your own. You may either beam down to the planet, uh, turn, to two, turn to 171, or press onwards, turn to 250. We're going to press onwards and turn to 250. Oh yeah, I'll just say actually, yeah, I've um, been very busy lately, obviously with Christmas and with other things, other commitments, so I haven't had a chance to see many videos. Um, I don't really know what videos to do really, I mean, I'd like at some point to do another PlayStation platformer, possibly Croc or Croc 2, um, but I'm really out of practice of that game, I'll have to practice at it, and I don't have the time for that either. So, I don't know when I'll be able to do... Uh, a real video game or a video game. Obviously, I'm really scraping the bow with Master System. I mean, the last game I did was over over the summer, and that was Renegade. And I don't know what other Master System games I can do. I mean, I've done all the ones I ever played as a kid, and then some. I mean, there's not many more games I can do really. I mean, because I'd have to practice at them, and uh, and I've done all the ones my favourite ones. I mean. There's not a lot more I can do. I mean, I have to and it goes for Game Boy as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, just let me know what you want me to do. I mean, I'll try to do something. Excuse me, try to do something. I might do Tomb Raider 2 at some point, but again, I'd have to practice at that because I don't want to die. I want to get all secrets. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at a PlayStation game next. Maybe Croc or Croc 2 or Tomb Raider 2. I don't have any Master System ones off the top of my head I can do, um, apart from game books. Well, not you know, not implying game books are a Master System game, but I don't know what other games I can do apart from game books. Anyway, um, um, yeah, where was I? Uh, the next solar system likely to contain life-bearing planets is some 2.2 light years away. You enter warp drive and head onwards, leaving hyperspace as you approach the solar system sometime later. Turn to 34. So we're going to turn to 34. Wait a minute. Yeah, it was 250, so I was just double-checking. Ooh, weird. 
you approach a medium-sized blue-green planet and take up orbit position. Scanning the planet's surface reveals several clusters of intelligent life forms. You try to contact them, but nothing comes up on the radio. Will you beam down onto the planet to investigate, turn to 13, or leave orbit and continue onwards, turn to 203? If you beam down, you may take three crew members from the adventure sheet with you. Um, we're going to leave orbit and continue onwards. Turn to 203. Oh, nearly there. Uh, oh, a bit further. Further. That's from... Uh, Alan Partridge, knowing me, knowing you all of the Christmas one, if you know of that. <coughs> okay. Oh, he's not shy. Anyway, uh, you leave orbit and probe with your scanners for likely destinations. Uh, some 3.3 light years away is a large red planet which you can head t uh, towards which you can head. Uh, is head towards a verbal phrase? Hmm... Yeah, I think it is. I'd I, I better say which you can head towards. Turn to 126. You switch to warp drive and head towards the red planet. As you reduce from warp speed, you approach a small grey planet. Will, uh, will you investigate this, turn to 261, or will you continue towards your original destination, turn to 329? Uh, we're going to investigate the small grey planet and turn to 261. Let's go. <coughs> Excuse me. Had a bit of a cough lately. <coughs> um, okay. The planet appears to have no life on it, but scanners detect some sort of activity. Perhaps the regular workings of a machine. You decide to investigate and send out a party in a recon plane, uh, uh, that's reconnaissance, to see what is happening. They pilot the plane. Uh, yeah, they pilot the plane to the area of the signal and land on the planet. It is rocky and barren, but not far from where they have landed, they find a scout ship of a type they have never come across before crashed into the surface. Well, of course not. They're in a parallel universe. Uh, will you tell them to investigate it further? Turn to 176, or return to your ship? Turn to 66. We're going to tell them to return to the ship. So 66. There it is, so not too exciting at the moment, but we're completing this book. We're not trying to kill ourselves. There it is. Landing the recon plane, the party make their way to the briefing room to report to you. As they relate their findings, you are interrupted suddenly with an urgent message. Captain, we have lost three of our engineering personnel who were involved with docking the recon plane. They are all dead. What will be your first command? Put the landing party into quarantine in the medical section. Turn to 306. Seal off the docking bay. Turn to 18. Jettison the recon plane. Turn to 201. Uh, we're going to seal off the docking bay and turn to 18. Oh yeah, someone left a comment on some of my other game book videos saying... Oh, just skip the battles and just assume that I win. But I'm not going to... I understand that they might be dull, but there's always the seek bar on a YouTube video. Just skip ahead if you don't want to watch them. But doing the battles is part of of the gaming experience. It's the same reason why in Master System games I will read out and do... I'll use the save system, the passwords, and put the passwords in and all that nonsense. I'll put. I'll do it all. Not just use save states and you know not use the password, because doing passwords and doing the battles on here and with the dice and everything is part of the experience that we had to do when we we did the well when I did these when I was little, I used to do the battles. I used to do the dice. That's part of the gaming experience. Putting passwords into the Master System games or whatever is part of the gaming experience. Turning, you know, someone also on, on my Medal of Honor vids is other saying, oh, just you know, skip the introduction sequences. Don't bother showing the PlayStation intro. That was part of the experience. Turn on the PlayStation. You have to put up with the PlayStation intro. Get onto the loading screens. That's part of it. And that's what I wanted to show. Uh, uh, I hope you understand that. You know, so I'm not going to skip the battles. If you want to skip them, use the use the seek bar on the YouTube uh, video, that's what it's there for. You know, I'm, don't, I'm not forcing you to watch them, 
but they're going to be in the video, so that's the way it is. Anyway, here's paragraph 18. Uh, quickly, the crew seal off the affected area so as to prevent the spread of this unknown killer. No more deaths are reported. Turn to 237. Uh, that's the first bit of excitement we've had. Using an EVA, extravehicular activity suit, your medical officer examines the body of one of the victims. She finds that the man has been poisoned. The planet below must have some sort of poisonous gas in its atmosphere, and this has now been carried back to the ship. Will you get the medical officer to search for an antidote and treat the crew? Turn to 223. Evacuate the air from all the affected sections. Um, we're going to evacuate the air from all the affected sections. So turn to 284. Come on, Cohagen. You, you got what you want. Um, now give these people ear. Um, you give the instruction to evacuate all air from the affected area, and all crew within the area are instructed to wear EVA extravehicular activity suits, as they will be in a vacuum. The air is pumped out into space, and half an hour later, fresh air is introduced. Your science officer checks this new air, and it is found to be poison-free. Turn to 11. Back on the bridge, you set your course. Ahead of you are two planets. You may head for either a large red planet, turn to 329, a blue planet, turn to 2, or a small, fast-moving spot which shows signs of life, turn to 92. We're going to head for the blue planet, so turn to 2. Oops. Here we go. You approach the blue planet and take up orbit position. Scanners indicate that the planet is inhabited and that there is considerable development of the planet's surface by some intelligent life form, uh, suggesting a well-organized social structure. You try various radio frequencies and, after some time, an alien face appears on the screen. Dressed in a uniform of some kind, this creature is humanoid, but thin, with a large bulbous head and bony fingers. Well, that's an original alien, isn't it? Uh, he announces himself as First Officer I Abail of the National Government of Jolson III. Um, you explain your plight and reassure him that you mean no harm. He invites you, but only you, to beam down to his offices. Will you beam down and visit this planet, turn to 222, or thank him for his officer, but for his officer, but thank him for his offer, but press onwards, turn to 41. We're going to thank him, uh, but uh, press onwards. Um, oh no, we're not, sorry. Uh, excuse me, we are going to beam down. We're going to beam down and visit the planet, so turn to 222. Yeah, so, I apologise for that. I wasn't reading my directions properly. Okay, oh, there he is. Um, yep, there he is, lovely, lovely picture. Um, as you appear in his office, I, Abel, comes forward to greet you. From his surroundings, you deduce that his society is indeed sophisticated, with a technology far more advanced than your own. The surface of his desk floats in the air, and he sits behind it, apparently on thin air. He invites you to sit, but there are no chairs. Cautiously, you sit as he has done, as he has done, and some unseen force takes your weight. Around the walls are, mo are moving holograms, uh, positioned as an Earth executive may have works of art hanging in his office. To the side of his desk is a screen which, uh, into which he talks. Moments later, another alien arrives with a tray of what you assume are refreshments. Aya Bale introduces this newcomer and offers you food and drink. Will you accept his offer, turn to 98, or will you thank him but politely decline, turn to 144? We're going to thank him but politely decline, and turn to 144. He is somewhat offended, but nevertheless continues the conversation. He offers to take you on a tour uh, of his capital, and you agree. To, st uh, to start with, he takes you to the tech center, explaining that you may be interested in seeing some of their recent areas of development in technology. Leaving his office, you stand on a moving conveyor belt, which takes you on a long trip through tubes and tunnels. Finally, you step off outside a door to the portal lab. 
Inside this lab is a clean white room with various machines and, and computer terminals and hover tables around the walls. In this lab, explains Aya Bale, our technicians have developed a space-time portal which opens a doorway between our universe and your own. However, it has yet to be tested. Um, we can offer you the opportunity of being the first subject and you may find that this is a way of returning to your own universe. He points towards a structure in one corner of the room which resembles a large door frame. Will you accept his offer and pass through the portal, 10 to 158, or is this a risk you would prefer not to take, 10 to 178? Okay, we're going to accept his offer and uh, pass through the portal, 10 to 158. A technician types commands into a keyboard and with a buzzing sound the portal charges up. Um, looking into it, you can see nothing but blackness. If you wish to change your decision, turn to 178. Otherwise, you step forward through the portal, turn to 53. So, turn to 53. As you pass through the frame, you fall forwards. Uh, you panic, but then you realise that you are not really falling, but rather floating downwards through empty space. Gradually you see uh, your surroundings become lighter and you can see that you are coming to a, sh to a sort of pathway seemingly made of a non-material energy. As you alight on it, you look around. The path twists and turns, forks and converges ahead of you like a spider's web set in a black void. The path appears to be able to support your weight, um, but all around is empty blackness. Cautiously, you proceed along the path, feeling your way with your feet. Um, ahead of you, the path forks. Will you take the left-hand fork, turn to 293, or the right-hand fork, turn to 312? And there's the pathway itself, I think. Okay, and we shall find out whether I take the left-hand or right-hand fork in the next video. So thanks uh, for watching. In the next video I should be able to complete this book. Again, I will reiterate it is quite short if you know what you're doing or if one knows what one's doing. So uh, therefore, uh, yeah, next video I shall complete it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you can join me for the next part, which will be the final part. And goodbye.